I have a girlfriend. Girlfriend reference, check. Figured I'd start things off strong today and make a clear statement about my relationship status. After all, my ego says that it's very important that all of you know. When the viewers ask, I must deliver. And 2,300 of you voted in this poll. So once again, I must deliver. Here it is. Electabuzz vs. Magmar. As a kid, I used to pronounce Electabuzz as Electrabuzz, but I promise that I won't do that today. This is one pronunciation that I actually learned as I got older. Angela and Raichu, on the other hand, required all of you incredible people to kindly educate me. Electabuzz and Magmar are two Pokemon that are clearly designed to be counterparts. In Generation 1, they have the same base stat totals, coming in at 395, and the same base special. Remember, special defense didn't exist in Generation 1. Electabuzz edges Magmar out in the speed category. I've recently felt the pain of having a low speed Pokemon in my Dunsparce challenge, so I know that this stat really does matter. Magmar gets extra base stats distributed into attack in compensation for Electabuzz's speed. This doesn't seem like a very good trade, but perhaps this challenge will change my mind. Moves like Body Slam will hit harder for Magmar, while due to its high base speed, Electabuzz will get a higher chance for critical hits. This is because in Generation 1, critical hit rate is calculated with base speed. Examining the level up learn sets shows that Electabuzz is at an early game deficit. Brock is going to be pretty difficult. Magmar has the better level up learn set. Luckily it learns Flamethrower through level up, so it'll have access to a 95 base power stab move, with 100% accuracy. If we examine the TM and HM learn sets, both of these Pokemon get access to incredible moves, like Body Slam and Psychic. Here is where Electabuzz gets access to its 95 base power stab move, Thunderbolt. There's obviously a human component in these race videos. There's a reason that I phrased the poll, which Pokemon will I be able to get a better time in Pokemon Yellow with? Here's the result, by the way. I may make mistakes or have unfortunate luck, so this is not an objective measure of which Pokemon is better in these generations. However, I hope that I'll do a good enough job with each playthrough that you'll feel that the results are accurate enough to say that Pokemon Yellow is easier with the winner. The clock in the upper left corner of the screen is the amount of real time it's taken me to get to the current spot in the game. I play these challenges on 4 times game speed, mostly so I don't go crazy. It also takes roughly 10 times as much time outside of the game to produce these videos. Scripting, recording, editing, and memeing takes time. I uh, do, however, try to save time uh, wherever I can, so I just never look up Venomoth on Bulbapedia. Why would I ever look at its page? It's obviously a flying psychic type. Look at its purple color, those big wings. Uh, I rest my case. Now let's discuss the rules for the challenge. The Pokemon who beats the game in the shortest amount of real time wins. I will strive to get the best possible time with each Pokemon. I'll make choices that make each run as easy as possible. Mistakes and bad luck will undoubtedly occur. I will not reset to correct them. I will use only the challenge Pokemon in battles. I won't use any items in battle. I won't use any rare candies until the Pokemon loses 10 times to a single Elite Four member. I won't use any glitches or exploits, with the exception of the badge boost glitch. Finally, I will pause the timer during the trash can puzzle so that RNG is eliminated from that portion of the run. If you enjoy my content, like the video, subscribe, comment, and share with your friends. Now, let's get into it. In order to get Electabuzz's playthrough started, I want to ensure that the rival chooses Vaporeon as his final evolution. This will make the subsequent fights against him much easier, improving my overall time. To set this up, I need to lose the fight in the Pokemon Lab and skip the fight west of Viridian. I think in my previous videos I've been saying that this fight is east of Viridian City. There's nothing east of Viridian. Directions are hard. In the lab fight, I can simply spam Leer until he knocks me out. After Electabuzz is demoralized by a cute dog tackling him into oblivion, I head north to Pewter City. Electabuzz is going to get walled by Brock, so let's talk strategy. I'm stuck with Quick Attack and Leer. Even if I level up to level 34 and learn Thundershock, both of Brock's Pokemon are ground types, so they're immune. 
In order to defeat him, I'm going to need to be able to knock out both of his Pokemon with 30 or less hits from Quick Attack. Luckily, I can use Leer to lower their defenses as well as to mitigate all damage from Onix's Bide. So the real question is, what level did I have to be in order to defeat him? I tried this fight at level 13, and it seems like it might be manageable with slightly more health. At level 15, I'm very optimistic. I use 3 Leers against Geodude, which brings it into 3 hit range with Quick Attack. Next is Onix. I immediately start going for Leer to lower its defense. Turn 1, it uses Bide, and I get off 3 Leers before switching into Quick Attack. From here, a strange fight ensues, where Onyx uses Screech a lot and fails to deal any damage to me. Due to its terrible move choices, I knock it out. So Electabuzz finishes Brock off at 18 minutes and 39 seconds. Really not a bad time with only Quick Attack and Leer. Magmar's typing alone doesn't clearly suggest which evolution will be easier to go up against in the end. So we need more data. Examining the other team members on his champion team, which rotate depending on how he evolves his Eevee, I see a clear choice. Vaporeon is disqualified because of its typing. Jolteon is fast and has insane special. However, Flareon is the same type as us and is significantly less intimidating. I'd rather face the Magneton and the Flareon rather than the Ninetales and Jolteon. To set this up, I've got to defeat him in the lab fight and skip the optional fight. This is easy since Magmar starts out with a stab move, Ember. Let's talk about fire moves against Brock. While they're not very effective against his rock typing, the fact that both Geodude and Onyx have such low special means that fire will still do decent damage. I arrive at Brock at level 10. My first fight against him goes alright, and it puts the idea in my head that this can be accomplished without any additional leveling. On the second fight against the Geodude, he deals more damage to me than it did before, and I arrive at the Onyx with 22 hit points remaining. However, I get the Onyx down to orange health, and then it goes for Bide. Because I only have Ember, I have to keep attacking. Either I'll get a critical hit and win, get a 3 turn Bide and win, or Onyx will land its attack and knock me out. I land 2 Embers, taking it down to low red health. Moment of truth. Looks like a 3 turn Bide. I use Ember one last time, outspeed Onyx, and miss. Yup, that's a 1 in 256 chance Gen 1 miss. Absolutely great. It unleashes energy and knocks Magmar out. The third fight goes even worse against the Geodude, and I arrive at Onyx with only 17 hit points remaining. Then I land two critical hits in a row, taking Onyx into mid-orange hit points. It lands a bind, taking me down to 8 hit points. I land Ember, taking it into red health. Please don't use Tackle or Bind. Please. It uses Screech, and with that I finished him off. 7 minutes and 12 seconds for Magmar. Less than half the amount of time that it took Electabuzz. That's probably for the best though, because Misty might be a nightmare for Magmar. She needs the biggest lead she can get. The next route is simple for Magmar because most of the trainers have bug Pokemon. However, in Mount Moon, I swear the game was trying to slow me down. I ran into so many wild Pokemon. In addition, I accidentally went down the first ladder and accidentally fought a Rocket Grunt that I didn't need to. The dangers of playing on 4 times speed. I grab the TM for Mega Punch and teach it to Magmar immediately. I fight the Super Nerd and then grab the Dome Fossil. Dark Lord time. Everyone, it's very important that we ride the Dome Fossil hype train and make as many comments about it as possible. Kabutops is awesome. It has scythes for hands. Time to fight the rival on Nugget Bridge. Spiro is a two hit. Sandshrew unfortunately lands the strongest move in the game before it gets knocked out. Rattata goes down easily, leading to Eevee. Here, Butt starts to put up a fight. Eevee lands a tackle first turn, taking me down to 22 hit points. Next, it lands another tackle, and I'm down to 11 hit points. I get my attack off, and the rival is finished. On Nugget Bridge, I use potions instead of walking back to the Pokemon Center to heal. Saves a little time if you have the PP to make it work. Misty is next. She opens with Staryu. Mega Punch deals a lot of damage to it first turn, 
and it faints without dealing any damage. This is the best possible result. Starmie is next. It outspeeds me using Water Gun. It deals about a third damage to Magmar. Mega Punch lands and deals around two fifths damage to Starmie. Okay, at this level it's going to be a three hit. Next turn it lands Bubble Beam and knocks Magmar out. I'm not going to be stubborn here. I'll head down to the SSN and get Body Slam in a few levels before attempting this again. On my way, I pick up the TM for Dig, which reminds me, I got an amazing comment on my Lapras video. I've been talking about buying escape ropes in all my recent challenges. But Charmander, my most important HM mule, can learn Dig. When I read this comment, I literally started to laugh. Then I checked Bulbapedia and laughed even more when I saw that Charmander could in fact learn Dig. I can't believe that I missed this the entire time. On the SSN, I get Body Slam and teach it to Magmar. Next, I grab Rest, the Rare Candy, and then fight the rival. As is typical, this fight is very easy. And with that, I've got to head back to Cerulean and attempt Misty again. This time, Body Slam 1 hits Staryu. That's an improvement. Starmie comes out and Magmar outspeeds it at this level, taking Starmie into orange health with Body Slam. Because I'm outspeeding, I can simply attack again next turn and knock the Starmie out. Misty's out of the way, and Magmar clocks in with a time of 25 minutes and 54 seconds. Let's see if Electabuzz can catch up. The route following Pewter City takes slightly longer for Electabuzz because he doesn't have a stab super effective move like Magmar did. In Mount Moon, the game doesn't give Electabuzz as many wild encounters as Magmar got. In addition, I avoid the rocket grunt that I fought with Magmar. I grab the TM for Mega Punch and I teach it to Electabuzz. I defeat the Super Nerd and grab the Dome Fossil. Two Dome Fossils in one video! I think this is likely a first on YouTube. My content is so original. Also, a race video between the fossil Pokemon was the next highest request in the poll. Because of that, I promise that it will be coming up soon. The rival on Nugget Bridge sends out Spearow. I land a critical hit with Mega Punch and take it down in a single turn. Then my least favorite little sand attacking devil comes out. I miss my Mega Punch and it lands the best attack in the game. Second turn, I land a Mega Punch and get a critical hit. But Sandshrew survives and tries to blow more sand into my eyes. But it fails. I miss one more time and then I finally knock it out. It only landed one sand attack. That's not so bad. Rotata is no issue at all and then his ace Eevee comes out. This fight sucked. I had my attack lowered multiple times, missed due to sand attack, and didn't deal much damage when I finally hit. I do take the victory, but it cost me a decent amount of time. Right before Bill's house, I need to grab Seismic Toss. I skipped it with Magmar, but Electabuzz may need it to get past the self-destructing hiker in Rock Tunnel. In order to get access to it, I need to battle the hiker first, which takes forever because of his Rock-type Pokemon. Then I have to battle the additional trainer to clear the path to the TM. This all adds time, but I'd rather add it here than get stuck in Rock Tunnel. Misty opens with Staryu. And first turn I get the misfortune of missing with Mega Punch, but Electabuzz tanks the tackle very well. Second turn my Mega Punch lands and knocks the Staryu out in a single critical hit. High base speed for the win. First turn against Starmie, Electabuzz misses again. I really can't wait to get Body Slam. Second turn it takes around two fifths damage from Mega Punch and then lands its first water move. Electric types don't resist water moves, but Electabuzz has good special. He tanks this critical hit very well. Because of this, I'm now confident that Electabuzz can get this done on his first fight. Electabuzz finishes Misty with a time of 31 minutes and 28 seconds. He's making up time, but Magmar already completed the SSN, so there's still a lot of ground to cover. Now it's Electabuzz's turn to get misplayed by me. I accidentally go into the wrong room when grabbing Body Slam. And then when picking up rest, I defeat the trainer and exit the room without grabbing the TM. Then this man in the hallway blocks me and forces me back through the stairs that I came up from. Overall, I think all the small things that I did here add up to less time than the Mount Moon mistake with Magmar. The rival on the SSN is a pushover as always. I defeat him with body slam spam and then grab cut. Let's talk about the trash can puzzle. 
In my previous two races, I let the timer continue during it. However, for Versus videos in the future, including this one, I'm going to stop the timer as soon as I enter the gym, and resume it when I'm standing next to Surge. This way, each Pokemon's time will not be affected by RNG. This puzzle really does have the potential to set one of the runs back minutes. After that's out of the way, the clock starts up again and Electabuzz goes head to head with Surge. First turn I land Body Slam and get Paralysis. Raichu gets a Mega Punch off dealing decent damage, but after that it goes down. This was one of the easiest Surge fights I've ever had. He's never hard, but this was a walk in the park. Electabuzz finishes Surge with a time of 37 minutes and 3 seconds. After the fight, I teach him Thunderbolt immediately. This powerful stab move is going to help us start to gain on Magmar. All Magmar has to do is get back to Surge's gym and defeat him. I accidentally run into a wild Pokemon because of a pathing mistake I made, but other than that I make pretty good time. The timers pause during the trash can puzzle, and then I fight Surge. Raichu outspeeds Magmar and lands a Mega Punch, which deals slightly more to us than it did to Electabuzz. Magmar uses Body Slam, and I get Paralysis again. This is shaping up to be a pretty fair comparison between the two runs. I outspeed next turn due to Paralysis, and then Raichu lands a Thunderbolt. But Magmar survives, and finishes it off the next turn. A little bit scarier with Magmar, but both got through the fight in their first attempt. Magmar clocks in with a time of 27 minutes and 14 seconds. Here's how these two Pokemon stack up so far. Magmar is in the lead by 9 minutes and 49 seconds, but that time was won during the Brock portion of the game. Electabuzz has made some time up since then. Unfortunately, looking ahead, the road seems easier for Magmar. Erika, Koga, and Sabrina will be easier due to typing and the fact that Magmar has higher physical attack. My plan for both playthroughs is to pick up Psychic and Saffron. This will help Electabuzz more as it gives him a super effective move against Erika and Koga's team. In addition, it will help against Giovanni and the Rockets because of their poison ground types. Alright, let's see how they'll do. But before that, I want to say a big thanks to everyone who's commenting on these videos. You're all helping me learn so much about these games. It feels so good to still be discovering things so many years later. An incredible person has made me aware that you can actually get onto Cycling Road without having a bicycle. Because of this, I skip the bike voucher in both these runs, and proceed directly to Rock Tunnel. On the way, the only item I stop for is repels. No more need for escape ropes either. In Rock Tunnel, I was a bit worried about the trainer with Slowpoke and Cubone. However, Magmar deals with him without issue. At the end of the cave, the self-destructing hiker is waiting for me. After taking the first Geodude down, I got a bit worried. At least one of his Pokemon is probably going to explode on me. The second Geodude does, and it deals a small amount of damage. Graveler comes out, and it also explodes all over Magmar. But Magmar survives. It was definitely the correct choice to save time and skip Seismic Toss. Once I get to Celadon, I do the regular errands. Catch a flying Pokemon, set a waypoint to Saffron, grab Psychic, and pick up the PP ups. Next is the Rocket Hideout. I take out Jesse and James with Psychic, and move on to Giovanni without saving in order to minimize time spent here. Onyx is a one hit with Psychic. Rhyhorn is a one hit with Psychic. And Persian takes two turns to knock out with Body Slam. After that, I get a chance to use Charmander's newly discovered digging abilities to leave. Good thing these uh, people are criminals, because Charmander probably just did a lot of property damage. Erica opens with Tangela. It's a monograss type, making my best choice Ember. Because of Tangela's bulk, it takes a while to knock it out. Up next are her dual type Pokemon. Against these, I use Psychic. Even with Stab and a 2 times super effective type advantage, Ember won't deal as much damage as a super effective Psychic. Ember would have 120 base power, and Psychic would have 180. I'm doing the math on these now. Consistent content is going to be the norm on this channel. Except against Venomoth. Magmar finishes Erika with a time of 40 minutes and 7 seconds. I teach Electabuzz Seismic Toss and head to Rock Tunnel. It's faster with Electabuzz because Slowpoke don't take multiple turns to knock out. 
Unfortunately, I lose the time that I gain this way when the last poisons me with her Bulbasaur. This forces me to heal several times with potions because I don't have an antidote with me. The self-destructing hi hiker, hyper, hyper, I keep saying hyper. The self-destructing hiker opens with Geodude. All right, I got it. Seismic Toss does good damage to it and I knock it out in two turns. So far, so good. The second Geodude also gets a two hit. Graveler comes out and it self-destructs. Electabuzz hangs on and then with that, I've made it through the tunnel. Good thing I picked up Seismic Toss. In Celadon, I do the errands in the same order Magmar did. Jesse and James are easy with Psychic and Thunderbolt. Giovanni's Onyx goes down in a single hit to Psychic, but Rhyhorn survives it with a sliver of health. Someone mentioned that you could actually make a drinking game out of my challenges. Take a shot every time a Pokemon survives on a sliver of health. What are some other rules? Every time I mention Venomoth or my girlfriend, take a shot. Second girlfriend reference, check. Erica is next. Tangela is easier this time with Body Slam. Electabuzz's insane speed grants me critical hits. Next is Weepin' Bell. I switch into Psychic and I don't knock it out. It lands a critical hit Razor Leaf, taking me down to 41 health. Okay, that's a bit scary. Gloom might knock me out. I use Psychic again, and due to my base speed, I get a critical hit, knocking it out in a single turn. Electabuzz gets a 49 minute and 14 second time against Erica. That shaves 42 seconds off Magmar's lead. Electabuzz is steadily gaining ground. I take on the rival at Pokemon Tower next. Due to my moveset, which is diverse, this fight is easy. Ignore my use of Thunderbolt against Magnemite. I think my brain was having a Venomoth moment. After he's taken care of, Marowak is next. Psychic gives me a quick way to knock it out and proceed to Jesse and James. I've said before that I'd like to do a run with their team, but now I'm thinking it would be way more fun to do a versus video for them. Jesse versus James, what do you think? In Sylph, I proceed as quickly as possible to the rival fight. His opening Pokemon Sandslash causes a lot of problems for Electabuzz. Someone in the comments also mentioned how Sandslash is probably the first Pokemon he sends out because you're supposed to lead with Pikachu. Playing with a mono-electric type, that seems like the correct theory. When fighting Magneton, I should be using Body Slam, but after Generation 2 gave it Steel type, my brain is forever wired to avoid physical attacks against it. During this fight, it confuses me, which leads to a loss. I tried one more time, and that confirmed to me that training is the correct choice right now. To do so, I scour through Sylph, grabbing items and leveling up. At level 41, the rival fight is more promising. Sandslash goes down to two Psychics, Magneton to two Body Slams, Ninetail to two Thunderbolts, Kadabra to a single Body Slam, and that leads to Vaporeon. I accidentally spammed A too fast and used Body Slam first turn. Then I switched into Thunderbolt, and it doesn't knock it out. Vaporeon has out of this world special. I outspeed on the last turn and then knock it out. Giovanni is easy with a combination of Psychic for his poison Pokemon and Thunderbolt for Persian. After I've taken care of him, I dig out of the Sylph building. Imagine Charmander, a little salamander, smashing through the building until it gets underground and then tunneling over to the Pokemon Center. There's uh, probably a few lawsuits coming for me. You can get onto Cycling Road without a bike. Here's how. Hold left and spam A. The dialogue will repeat and you'll take a step to the left. After the dialogue finishes, you're no longer on the tile that activates the script and so you can just enter Cycling Road. When you do, the game kindly spawns you with a bike. Nice. A 1 million Poké Dollar item for free. I finish the Safari Zone and apply another piece of advice from the comments section. Charmander can dig out of here too. I'm sure the tunnel I make won't cause any problems in this ecological habitat filled with rare Pokemon. Charmander is going to serve some serious time. Koga is next. Because of my speed, I can easily outspeed all of his Pokemon and land Psychic. Despite their purple color, these are bug poison Pokemon. Except Venomoth, of course. It's clearly psychic flying type. Nothing will change my mind. Not all the facts in the world. But wait, this Pokemon card is pretty green. Hmm. 
Electabuzz gets a time of 1 hour, 9 minutes, and 47 seconds. Pokemon Tower is a bit slower for Magmar, due to its typing. Its moveset isn't quite as good here. I've also only got Ember as a stab move, and it has 40 base power. Electabuzz has the 95 base power Thunderbolt. I really can't wait for Fire Punch at level 43. At the top of Pokemon Tower, Marowak almost knocks Magmar out. That would have been scary, because I haven't saved since Erika. Because I can't use any other Pokemon in battle, I'd have to reset if Magmar faints. Luckily, I make it through the Marowak fight, but I neglect to learn my lesson, and I don't save. In Sylph, I do the same thing as I did with Electabuzz. However, I get paralyzed by Arbok. Then the trainer outside the room where you heal fights me, and things start to get bad. I'm confused, and hitting myself. I go down to 42 hit points, and then Drowsy comes out, bringing me down to 14. Hypno is next. It comes out and lands a headbutt. I really thought this was over right here, but Magmar survives with two hit points. She really wants to keep her lead over Electabuzz. My body slam paralyzes Hypno, allowing me to outspeed and knock it out. Next is the rival, and I remember to save here. There's no way for me to lose all that progress now. This feels a little bit smoother than with Electabuzz. I make it all the way to Flareon, and it begins to set up the strongest move in the world. Is it just gonna sand attack spam me and let me win in an emotionally painful fight? It doesn't. It lands bite and does way more damage than I was expecting, knocking Magmar out. I tried the fight one more time, but it seems I also need to level up a bit, just like Electabuzz. At level 41, I get back to Flareon without issue. This time, I managed to knock it out. So it took Magmar three attempts to beat the rival here, and it took Electabuzz four. Giovanni is easy, and now I can manifest myself a bicycle. Silly guard, you can't stop me. He probably stole the Saffron Guard's beer or something. No wonder they're so thirsty. I finish the Safari Zone, and it's time for Koga. The first three Venonats faint in a single hit from Psychic. After that, Magmar lands Psychic against Venomoth, and it does massive damage due to a critical hit. Koga uses X attack, and I'm done. That was easy. Magmar gets a time of 1 hour, 1 minute, and 45 seconds. Electabuzz shaved 1 minute and 5 seconds off Magmar's lead in this leg of the race, but the lead is still a sizable 8 minutes. Next is what might be the hardest part of the run for both of these Pokemon. Magmar has to face both Blaine and Giovanni, both of which could give it troubles, and Electabuzz has to face Giovanni. The memory of facing him with Voltorb is something I don't want to think about, and I'm scared that it may be a similar experience with Electabuzz. However, this time I've got good stats and a more diverse move pool on my side. I hope it's enough. Sabrina goes very well for Magmar. I outspeed most of her Pokemon and Body Slam does massive damage. I surf across the sea, complete Pokemon Mansion, damage this place even more than it already is by having Charmander dig out of it, and then I face Blaine. He opens with Ninetales. I get good Paralysis Lock and knock it out. Against Rapidash, the same situation unfolds. Arcanine is last. It also gets paralyzed, and just before I can deal the final blow, it gets me. Pretty close. I can do this though. The next fight, I get through Rapidash and Ninetales again. I don't think I'll ever have troubles with them. Arcanine gets paralyzed first turn, and then all of the luck in the world collides. It makes bad choices with its moves, and Paralysis does its job. I could have lost more time here, but I'm happy to be moving on. Blaine kindly gives me Fire Blast, and in return, I ruin his gym with Charmander. Dig saves a lot of time. Next is Giovanni. He opens with Doug Trio. Body Slam doesn't knock it out, and then it lands a dig, taking Magmar down in a single hit. The next battle, I try Fire Punch instead. It knocks the Doug Trio out, and I get past Persian without difficulty. Then Nidoqueen comes out, lands an Earthquake, and crushes my hopes and dreams. While I did survive with 8 hit points, this won't be possible to get past Nidoking and Rhydon. They both are going to take at least 2 hits, and they'll get at least 1 hit off. I decide to train. 
Funny enough, in this gym, there's another trainer who has a Doug Trio. I figured because it's a lower level that this wouldn't be an issue. But it was. It knocks Magmar out, and I have to reset, losing some time. It's a good thing that this is the moment that I have to reset, because the two earlier ones would have been way worse. I'll be honest, I trained a lot. I came back at level 52. Nope, can't do it at that level. Then I came back at level 55. Nope, can't do it at that level either. I figured out that Confuse Ray would be useful, but because the Nidos require two hits from Magmar, this isn't consistent, and I don't want to waste time waiting for luck. I'm probably going to need to level up for the League anyways. In addition, if a really lucky win here was the reason that Magmar won the race, I don't think I could feel good about the results. To improve her battle prowess, I use vitamins to boost her special and defense stats. Hopefully she can deal more damage and tank the earthquakes slightly better now. But even at level 57 with the vitamins, this still isn't happening. Now let's check in with Electabuzz before Magmar finishes this gym. Sabrina feels almost identical to Magmar. Two easy KOs and then Alakazam takes two hits. Next is Blaine. He opens with Ninetales. Stab Thunderbolt it is. It takes three turns to knock it out, and I only sustain a small amount of damage in the process. Rapidash comes out. I use Body Slam first turn, and immediately regret not sticking with Thunderbolt. I switch back, get Paralysis, and then knock it out. 68 hit points remaining for the Arcanine fight. I really doubt that this is going to happen. I use Thunderbolt, dealing around two-fifths damage to an Arcanine, and it lands takedown. Electabuzz survives with 12 hit points. Next turn, Thunderbolt lands, and because of Electabuzz's Electrobuzz, I said it, I said it, oh no. Because of Electabuzz's base speed, it gets a critical hit. Arcanine faints. I defeated Blaine on my first attempt. While this is a bonus for Electabuzz's time, the hardest leader is next. Giovanni opens with Dugtrio. It wastes its first turn on Fissure, and then faints. Persian comes out, and I crit it. So I'm moving on to Nidoqueen with full health. This is the best possible scenario. Psychic deals over half damage, and then it hits me with Earthquake. Electabuzz faints. I attempted it one more time, but it went significantly worse. It's time to train. In the interest of fairness, I'm going to try to come back at the same levels that Magmar did. I think Electabuzz is going to actually get through this sooner than I can anticipate. I teach him Submission, which might be useful against Rhydon should we arrive with high health. I also spend some money and feed him some vitamins. Time to get more buff, Electabuzz. I return to Giovanni at level 52 and at level 55, but it isn't happening. Electabuzz is taking significantly more damage than Magmar is from the Earthquakes. At level 60, I can one-shot the Dugtrio with Body Slam and sometimes one-hit the Persian with Thunderbolt. This time, it fails a Screech, so it's all the same. Against Nidoqueen, I use Psychic, and at this level I can now one-shot it, without a critical hit. Due to Nidoking being more offensive than defensive, I can also one-shot it. Ride on is last. Since I'm at full health, I use Submission. Honestly, I kinda wish it had done more, but Ride on has great defense and we don't have Stab. Giovanni uses a guard spec, and because of that, Electabuzz seals the deal next turn, clocking in with a time of 1 hour and 43 minutes and 44 seconds. So when did Magmar defeat Giovanni? Let's find out. At level 60, I come back and find that Magmar can now one-shot Dugtrio and Persian with Flamethrower. Against Nidoqueen, my best bet is to use Confuse Ray because Psychic isn't one-hitting it. Giovanni uses a guard spec on Nidoqueen, and I avoid Earthquake for now. I take him into low red with Psychic, and then it hits itself in Confusion. Next is Nidoking, and the strategy is the same. It hits itself first, allowing me to outspeed second turn and knock it out. I've reached Rhydon. I go for turn 1 Psychic, taking it into orange health. It lands Earthquake, and Magmar survives, finishing it off the next turn. Magmar clocks in with a time of 1 hour, 47 minutes, and 14 seconds. Here's the stats from this leg of the race. Electabuzz has taken a 3 minute and 30 second lead over Magmar. I attribute this to two factors. Magmar has lower speed and less chance to critical hit. 
Also, Magmar felt better against Giovanni initially. Because it felt better, I made a few more attempts thinking it would make it at each level. Electabuzz was clearly outgunned, going down to every single earthquake, so it made more sense to just head back to leveling up as quick as possible. As I was playing through the first portion of this versus, I was really scared that Magmar was going to run away with it. But now we have a real race. Uh, just an insert as I was recording the script, I also thought that Magmar also took more time to train up, just because it has weaker stab moves. So I wasn't quite one-hitting all the Pokemon that I was training against that I was with Electabuzz. So it just felt a little bit more smooth actually training as well. They both steamroll through the final rival battle. Now, I'm going to record the pre-league time. This is the time when the Pokemon is ready to enter Lorelei's chamber. Magmar arrives at the league at 1 hour, 52 minutes, and 14 seconds. And Electabuzz arrives at the league at 1 hour, 49 minutes, and 6 seconds. I want to talk briefly about my approach to the league. In this video, I'll allow saving between league members. We're aiming for speed with two strong Pokemon, so it seems like the best rule. Not saving has the potential to create some serious imbalances between the two times. These imbalances most likely would be due to RNG. Imagine Electabuzz gets to the champion and gets knocked out by a critical hit. Having to do the entire league again punishes that Pokemon significantly due to in-game luck. In my playthroughs of Generation 1, I collect 10 rare candies along the way. In most circumstances, I wait until the last possible moment to use these, because the higher level I use them at, the more experience they permit me to skip. Since time is clearly such an important factor in these races, I've made the decision to only use these rare candies if the Pokemon fails against a league member 10 times. If this occurs, I'll use 5 rare candies and continue to attempt the member. If I fail 10 times again, I'll use the remaining 5. To achieve the best possible time with each Pokemon, it's possible to just use the rare candies immediately before the Elite Four. But level 71 for these Pokemon would honestly make the league kind of trivial and not a very enjoyable video. Plus I'd like to see the lowest level that these Pokemon can make it through the league at. Magmar is likely going to struggle against Lorelei. I'm hoping that Slowbro and Lapras won't cause too many issues. Also, remember there's a text glitch in Generation 1, so it'll say that my fire moves are not very effective. Just ignore this, they're dealing neutral damage. Her first two Pokemon are not difficult, and then Slowbro comes out. I use Confuse Ray against it to help me avoid Surf. Unfortunately for Lorelei, she likes to use Withdraw, and only lands a single Surf before getting knocked out. Jinx is easy to knock out with Flamethrower, but how will Lapras be? I land my Flamethrower, and it does around two-fifths damage. Lapras uses Hydro Pump, and knocks me out. In my fourth fight against Lorelei, Dugong hits Magmar with Bubble Beam, and then goes down. This is honestly a bad start. I take Cloyster into Potion Range, so it's out of the way without any issues. Against Slowbro, I'm going to use Body Slam first turn, in order to maximize damage before it sets up Withdraw. I get Paralysis. Then on my third turn, I land a critical hit. It didn't land a Surf. That means I'm much more prepared for Lapras this time. Against it, I use Confuse Ray to hopefully buy myself at least one extra turn. I survive its Hydro Pump with four hit points and land Flamethrower. Looks like it's a three hit. It hits itself in Confusion, buying me one more turn. It also looks like it's now within KO range. Magmar uses Flamethrower, and Lapras survives with a sliver of health. However, this triggers a Super Potion, and so I just knock it out the next turn. Four fights for Lorelei. That's not bad. Bruno is a joke. I know Psychic. I have good speed and special, so this fight isn't worth commentating. Do you think he feels ashamed of how bad he is? Or does he just enjoy his title and the benefits that come with it? Maybe he's just in the gym too much, working on his own muscles, and his per Pokemon are like, Hey, maybe you could help us train? We keep getting wrecked by everyone who comes through here? Shut up, my champ. I've got to finish my upper body set. Agatha is also easy due to Psychic. I do get poisoned during this fight, but because I'm knocking her Pokemon out so quickly, it isn't an issue. Also, did she catch her Pokemon as ghosts, or is she just old enough that they died and became ghosts? 
Lance is next. He opens with Gyarados, and this is very unfortunate for Magmar. I try Confuse Ray, but Gyarados still lands its Hydro Pump, taking Magmar into orange health. So there's absolutely no way for me to survive two of those. At this point, I have a couple choices. This fight isn't hard, only because of Gyarados though. The second Dragonair knows Bubble Beam. Aerodactyl outspeeds and frequently critical hits. And Dragonite is going to take several turns to knock out. Ten fights later, and it's time to use my first batch of rare candies. On fight 13, I get excellent luck against Gyarados. It hits itself first turn, and Hydro Pump misses second turn, allowing Magmar to proceed without taking any damage. I take two hits from the Dragonairs, but I stay in green health, moving on to Aerodactyl. It lands Hyper Beam first turn, taking me down to 48 hit points. I knock it out and move on to Dragonite. This still isn't looking good. Turn 1 I use Confuse Ray. It hits itself. Turn 2 I switch into Psychic. I get what I want and I lower Dragonite's special. It hits itself again and I've done it. Honestly, I figured I would have to just use the rest of the rare candies before I got through this fight, but Confuse Ray was able to help out after all. Magmar completes the Elite Four in 2 hours, 7 minutes, and 25 seconds. Electabuzz is going to have an easy time with Lorelei. Jinx and Lapras are the only two Pokemon that he can't one-shot with Thunderbolt. But they don't know any moves that can knock him out. He gets through this on his first attempt. I think Bruno is still working out or something. He probably just lets his Pokemon do whatever they want while he focuses on his bench press. Agatha is a similar story to Magmar. But here it's actually easier, since I can use Stab Super Effective Thunderbolt on Golbat. Electabuzz is making incredible time so far. While it was slow off the start against Brock, it's really showing the advantage that a strong and fast electric type has in the late game. Lance is next. Can he slow Electabuzz down? Gyarados goes down to a single 4 times effective Thunderbolt. The Dragonairs are no issue to deal with. Thunderbolt is super effective against Aerodactyl as well, and at my current level, I outspeed it. So far so good. Dragonite is last. I use Thunder Wave to increase my odds of avoiding damage. I know I'm not going to one-shot this thing. It still moves and lands Fire Blast. While it doesn't do a lot of damage, it does burn me. I get it down to red health, but I'm one move away from fainting as well. Paralysis doesn't prevent it from attacking, and Electabuzz goes down. So that's the first loss of the league in this playthrough. With how that fight went, it's clear to me that Electabuzz can get this done at this level. On my third fight against him, his Dragonite misses a Fire Blast. Since Psychic lowered its special, the previous turn, I knock it out. Electabuzz comes in with a time of 1 hour, 54 minutes, and 13 seconds. It's now 13 minutes ahead of Magmar. Honestly, the league with Electabuzz feels like it's one of the easiest I've had in all of my playthroughs. I'm at a lowish level, I don't have Starmie's diverse moveset, but it still feels great. The champion opens with Sandslash. This is an issue for both Pokemon. Magmar, however, can one-shot it with Flamethrower. I can't knock the Alakazam out, so I'm going to have to take some damage in this fight. It gets Psybeam, and then I take it down. I level up to level 69. Nice. The next two Pokemon aren't scary, but Cloyster can be. It knows Clamp, which is a multi-turn water move, and I really can't take much damage from it. I need enough health to survive Flareon's quick attack at the end of the fight. In this fight, Magmar gets a critical hit and knocks the Cloister out. All that's left is Flareon. It comes out, quick attacks me, I land Body Slam, and paralyze it. That's it. Magmar did it. So the time for Electabuzz to beat is 2 hours, 9 minutes, and 47 seconds. Sandslash comes out first, and I use Psychic, since I don't have a stab move that can damage this thing. Earthquake lands. <laughs> I'm sorry for that awful pun. I'm Canadian after all, and it's a requirement of my citizenship to apologize even if I don't mean it. So this fight is going to be rough, because Sandslash is likely always going to open up like this. After Alakazam is out of the way, I realize the next issue. Exeggutor takes forever to knock out. It takes me down to one hit point with Barrage, and then Ninetales finishes me off. Because I don't think Thunder Wave is going to be that useful anymore, I teach Electabuzz Rest. 
Because of rest, I can use the prolonged fight against ex Exeggutor as an opportunity to heal up and proceed with decent health. Because of some awful luck with confusion against Ninetales, I have to heal up twice before proceeding. I enter the fight with Magneton with low red health. I'll heal up and then knock it out. Unfortunately, because of typing, Magneton really just wants to continuously screech at us. This is worrying because Vaporeon knows Quick Attack, and it could deal a lot of damage with my defense so low. It comes out and I outspeed, but Thunderbolt doesn't one-hit it. Then it uses Mist. We can now crown our champion. Electabuzz completed the game with a time of 2 hours, 1 minute, and 10 seconds. That's a full 8 minutes and 37 seconds faster than Magmar. I think that this result would repeat if I tried this again. Magmar has a clear advantage in the early game, but that advantage fades in the mid game, allowing Electabuzz to keep pace. The thing that really matters is that Magmar's fire typing just isn't as strong against the Elite Four as Electabuzz's electric typing is. So for everyone who voted that Electabuzz would win, congratulations, you got it right. Thanks so much for watching. I've got some cool runs coming up, Aerodactyl, Snorlax, and then Quillfish. Additionally, for the next Versus race, I'll be heading over to Johto and using two seriously awesome Pokemon. One's a Bug type and the other one's a Ground type. They also share something in common. Well, that's it. If you enjoy my content, like, subscribe, click the bell, comment, and share this video with a friend. If you want to go above and beyond, consider joining my Patreon. But what matters most is that you're here watching. My girlfriend is incredible. Final reference, check. You're incredible too. I'll see you in my next video. So as a bonus for sticking around so long, did you ever wonder what would happen if we used the rare candies right away before the Elite Four? Well, Electabuzz steamrolls through the league not losing to a single member until the champion. The performance here really speaks to how electric types are quite strong against this league. On the second fight with the rival, it gets what it needs and it takes him out. So only one loss for the league for Electabuzz. Magmar struggles slightly more. It loses twice before getting to the champion. Once on Lorelei and once on Lance. Here's their times with rare candies. Faster, easier, and significantly less exciting. Plus, it's fun to see how low a level you can make it through the league with. That's all for today. See you next time.